Hello and welcome back to podcast uh, Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez, Episode 5, Timeline versus No Timeline with Previous Recursion. Today I want to show you the benefits of using timeline versus not using timeline in your models with a very basic example. I have two matrices here. They're more or less the same. I have year and month, and I have the metrics of actual versus forecast, and I have some random numbers uh, located in each of the months for actual for 2014. Uh, again, my top one is using the uh, is not use, utilizing the timeline functionality. My bottom matrix is using the timeline functionality, and that is uh, manifest in the fact that you can see on year here I have a little clock and I have this little chevron, if you will, fishtail on the end, and then at the <clears throat> on the month again I have the little clock here. I've created this timeline. Uh, as far as recursion goes, I want to say that my forecast is actually the previous month's actuals. It's very simple, our basic forecast. And in order to get that to happen without a timeline, what I would do is I just click on forecast and I would go equals uh, the month actuals of the month previous. Let me type that correct. Previous. Okay. And what you can see here is that it worked beautifully. So month four, the actuals were 2541. So I want the forecast to be 2541 for month five. And that's exactly what happens. The actuals of the previous month go to the forecast of the next month. But what happens here in 2015 when I'm not using the timeline feature is that I would expect this 3904 to be part of month one of 2015 because, you know, December 2014 is previous to uh, January 1 or January of 2015. But in order to get this to work, what I have to do is I have to go and I have to create a separate formula for forecast period one and how I would do that. So I'd click on forecast and one and then click equals. It is the actual of the year previous, right? And what month is it? It is of the last month of the year previous. So I'd go month last right here to get it to populate all the period ones. And you can see that's that then populates uh, the January forecast. So if I were to go ahead and change any one of these numbers uh, in period 12, I would expect to see that trickle on through to the following uh, first month of the year. So in order to get that functionality to work in, with no timeline, you need to create these two different formulas with a little bit of different recursion than uh, just one formula. Now, the beauty of timeline is I can do this with just one formula. It knows that because I have this parent-child rela relationship of year month, that if I want the previous month, if I mention previous on the word month and I'm in period one, then it's going to go to the previous year and pull in the last uh, month. And that's demonstrated by going to forecast and equals actual month previous. And I, as I do that, you can see it worked awesomely in the fact that it goes 3904 for period 12, brings it down here. If I were again to, were to put, throw in some random data in here and make this 4500, I would see for, and that was for period 12, 2015, I would see that populate automatically into period one of 2016 without needing an additional formula. So that is just a really simple example of a timeline versus no timeline with some recursion in Quantrix Modeler. Uh, this is a recent, uh, well within the last year or two, development, this timeline feature, and it is awesome in Quantrix. If you have any questions that you feel I could answer in regards to Quantrix Modeler, please uh, send them my way. You can email me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com or you can follow me and send me a, uh, a question on YouTube in the comments or you can follow me at Twitter at quantrixauthor. 
and I would be more than happy to uh, try to answer your Quantrix questions because I love Quantrix. And please come back again and watch another uh, podcast on Quantrix Authority with Richard Lopez. Thanks.